I'm Pete Moline, and I want to thank you again for coming. I'm excited about our agency's direction and look forward to sharing our journey with you today. There do remain questions about zero emissions, which is a big part of why we're gathered. Getting started can be likened to a rite of passage that I recently witnessed. Young people ranging in age from 8 to 14 and wanting to advance to the next level of Taekwondo were required to break a board with their foot. The first to try was an eight-year-old girl. As soon as the board was positioned, she readied herself quickly and broke the board in less than three seconds. The look on her face was priceless. Others tried and succeeded, while others, some quite tentative, did not. Afterwards, I asked the young girl if she was scared or worried as she prepared to execute her kick. She said not at all. She had learned the techniques, practiced, and the instructor told her she could do it. And she believed and trusted her teacher. In many ways, embarking on a zero emissions path is similar. We must learn about the technology, determine the impacts on our fleet and budget, and if it makes sense, take the leap. We are doing that at King County Metro, and even though we expect there will be setbacks, we see those as opportunities to learn, and we accept that with eyes open. We, as you, are a resource for others who are thinking about or are already on a zero emissions journey. There are lots of reasons we're headed down this path. Climate change and equity are key priorities for King County, and our strategic climate action plan and equity and social justice plans inform our direction on this effort. We have a critically important, clear, strong leadership direction. I've shared with any who ask that top leadership buy-in should be your first step. We are also partnering, partnering with other agencies, and the public is enthusiastic. We're moving forward with zero emissions while recognizing challenges, some of which we haven't even emerged. We have and continue to expect to learn from doing, including setbacks we'll undoubtedly experience along the way. It has been and will continue to be extraordinarily challenging, and we are grateful to have county and transit leadership support and a network of folks like you with whom we can collaborate. With many stakeholders and the inherent risk of new technology, planning is especially important. Just getting started, as we are, has helped answer planning questions while raising more of them. We are learning and adapting as we go. There's nothing like experience to really understand a thing. We evaluated zero emissions fleet options based on the five criteria you see on this slide. Our direction aligns with our goals and priorities and sets us on a long-term, low-carbon path which contributes to local air quality and public health benefits. And we've determined zero emissions fleets are feasible. You heard from our county executive earlier. Thank you, Dow. King County is committed. In January of this year, we reached some important milestones. There's the press release on the left with a link to our feasibility report. Hopefully you've been able to see that. It's really good for falling asleep at night. It's only 64 pages, but it's got a lot of good information in it. On the right is a Seattle Times story from earlier this year indicating we're on the way to 120 buses by 2020. So this slide shows our organization's size by numbers and types of fleet vehicles. We're among the largest in the U.S. Our service area in King County is the 13th largest in the U.S. by population and covers 2,300 square miles. We have challenging, hilly terrain. We have over 200 routes serving all of Seattle and surrounding areas, both urban and suburban. Our fleet is replaced at a rate of 5 to 7 percent per year, not including our planned 70 percent ridership growth by 2040, which our Metro Connect strategic plan anticipates. There are two dominant types of battery bus technologies today. They differ in the service profile they best meet, infrastructure required, and cost. Metro has defined these two charge types this way. Slow charge, up to 140 miles range and no more than four hours to charge. We didn't make that up. That's a lot of what the manufacturers are telling us. The pros with that approach is operations would be quite similar to our current approach where we fuel at night or in between peak service periods. The cons are the space and operational constraints for charging and chargers at bases where space is limited. The fast charge is 25 mile range and charge time of 10 minutes or less. The pros are there's no impact to bus base capacity and buses can be in service for a longer period of time virtually indefinitely. The cons are the challenges in citing charging equipment and charging infrastructure is also more costly. 
There is schedule risk too if buses are delayed and also less route flexibility with that approach. To achieve zero emission fleets, we have and will continue to partner with our power utilities partners. We found our utility providers eager to participate and support us and they want to be in on the ground floor. We're exploring issues like capital costs, electricity rates including demand charges, backup power feeds and to the extent possible how best to charge our fleet at optimal times for us and for the power company. In our experience with our small fleet of three Proterra 40-foot fast charge buses that have met our performance criteria of at least 23 miles range per charge and a charge time of less than 10 minutes and the capability to perform on our hilly terrain, you can see in the bottom right of this slide a screenshot of an always available daily Proterra performance indicator update. So I can click on this link and find out how we're doing from the time we started operating to where we are now. It's maintained by Proterra and of course we can get to it and anybody can get to it. If you're interested in the link, I can send it to you. Our near term plan is to expand our zero emissions fleet. We'll acquire 20 more fast charge buses for revenue service imminently and 10 slow charge buses to test with 85 more of a charge type yet to be determined which will be based on what we learned during the slow charge test. So let's talk about that slow charge extended range test. Starting next year, we plan to test 10 slow charge extended range buses through the four seasons. We will test six 40 foot buses from three different manufacturers and four 60 foot buses from two manufacturers. The results of these tests will inform our future bus purchase and infrastructure installation decisions. We'll be deploying new battery electric buses based on the following priorities. Service profile of routes served by base, we have seven bases. Efficiency of scale by focusing on vehicle maintenance and operations workforce and workflows and equipment capacity at a subset of bases before expanding throughout our entire service area. Also compatibility of infrastructure and operations for the battery electric bus fleet, charging equipment space constraints and bus parking layouts. Also, the opportunity to advance social equity, particularly by reducing emissions to communities most negatively impacted by air quality, by poor air quality. So initially, we'll expand our fast charge fleet out of Bellevue Base where we started, which is on the east side. The test will be run out of South Base, which is down near Tukwila, down near the airport, if any of you guys flew in. The results of our slow charge extended range test will provide important data for future decision making. It's important that we serve our entire route structure and build up to an all zero emissions fleet using equity and operational considerations to help us prioritize the route expansion order. <coughs> Building on air pollution benefits, King County has achieved through transition to diesel hybrid, a transition to zero emission fleet would eliminate tail air, tailpipe air pollution completely. In King County and across the United States, low income families and people of color are more likely to live in neighborhoods that have high concentrations of air pollution and are at higher risk for poor public health outcomes as a result. In our report, we examine how the air pollution benefits of zero emissions technology could advance social equity by prioritizing deployment to vehicles operating in communities most vulnerable to air pollution. In collaboration with King County Public Health and the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, we identified the most vulnerable communities based on current air pollution levels and existing health conditions that may be caused by or exacerbated by poor air quality and other social factors that suggest population may be less equipped to deal with health effects. Based on these factors, the map that you see was created. The darker the shading, the higher the vulnerability to air pollution and the higher priority for reducing air pollution in that area. We created a profile also for each bus route based on the vulnerability of the communities along the route and the red routes indicate the highest priority for reducing emissions, green routes the lowest. Among other factors, we are prior prioritizing battery electric bus deployment based on the vulnerability to air pollution of communities where buses from that base operate. <coughs> prioritizing deployment in the near term to South Base, our South Base in Tukwila provides the opportunity to, to address current inequities in air pollution in King County. This chart shows how we're going to get there. The x-axis is time, the y-axis is percentage of fleet. We'll start 
replacing and expanding fleet with only zero emissions buses in 2020, which will get us to all zero emissions if all goes well between 2034 and 2040, as Dow stated earlier. This is how we expect to transition over the next 15 to 20 years. We look forward to reaping the benefits of better air quality and quieter buses. Metro has prioritized early zero emissions fleet deployment to communities most vulnerable to air pollution. Battery electric bus operations challenge our route planning thinking and service structure. Both type and size mix of buses will be necessary to meet our service requirements. One size isn't likely to fit all. Both battery electric bus technology types are likely to be part of our future fleet. Our analysis examined how we currently operate and future zero emissions battery electric technology could meet Metro service needs now and later to our current planning and current uh, service planning structure. Fast charge technology has proven successful in our test and offers opportunity, though somewhat more limited, to, our, to service our bus needs. Current and future slow charge battery ranges can meet significant portions, 70%, of our service. We have growing confidence that battery range will increase to meet the needs of, of more of our service. We are predominantly planning bus routes based on PACS practices, but we are keeping an open mind to rethinking route planning as we transition to battery electric buses. We also want software to be able to give us a snapshot of the fleet's state of charge, bus by bus, and upcoming route requirements to guide required overnight charging times and durations. We'll partner with utility providers to minimize our electricity cost and charge our buses only as much as needed for the next day's operations. Costs are comparable, and life cycle costs need to be competitive, and we think they are, and indications our costs are coming down. We made conservative assumptions based on our own data and that of other agencies to develop our feasibility report. We'll continue to monitor these total costs and performance. Time will tell, and one thing is certain, things will change. But the bottom line is costs are comparable. It's a little bit more expensive on the capital side initially, but operating costs are less. So what are the lessons we've learned so far? Plan, plan, plan. Involve the right people and collaborate. You all are part of that. Include internal and external customers. Take advantage of partnerships and learning. Don't forget about cities for permitting. And of course, teaming with power companies. Expect to learn from setbacks too. Expect to be asked to share and educate and inform others constantly. Expect scale up challenges. We expect 70% of our fleet to be zero emissions by 2030. We'll reach a point in the not too distant future where we must solve the challenges of a predominantly battery electric fleet. We must ensure that our operators are engaged, supportive, and supportive. Training and workflow challenge changes must be accounted for, and we must adjust as necessary. And what if the power goes out? We'll have to have backup for that. Our feasibility analysis also identified requirements the manufacturing industry has yet to meet. That will be required for us to transition our fleet. Manufacturers are taking notice. Our voice, along with yours, provides us with the opportunity to leverage with manufacturers to get the products tailored to our needs. <coughs> Development of vehicle and charging technology that meets our service needs. In our case, more than half of our fleet are 60-foot buses. Electric van pools and access vehicles. Charging technology that is standardized. Renewable energy supplies. Metro will also need to dedicate efforts to ensure this is successful especially with workforce training and development. We expect a need to prepare to adjust business and operational practices, and customer service will remain our most important consideration. In conclusion, there will be challenges and lessons and even setbacks. We expect to learn, adapt, and overcome, and we're committed. The County Council approved this plan this year, and it's been a team effort so far. We engage Metro staff experts from all over our agency to get buy-in, and their feedback in combination with high-level leadership and outside agency input. We'll continue to engage in stakeholder conversations and work together to do what makes sense for Metro and our partners, all while not being afraid to learn as we go.